Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today I'm going to be taking a look at coffee playing cards from Ido Huang. Ido is well known for his contributions in close-up magic, but he's also worked in playing card design, collaborating with guys like Alex Pandrea to produce a number of different decks over the years. In 2019, he did a lecture tour, and he wanted to have a little bit of a something to sell to people who attended his lectures. So he went to Cardamundi, they produced this deck of playing cards that you see here. Now he has a side passion for coffee, so coffee was the inspiration for the deck. And he produces in a very limited number. Only 300 of these decks were produced. Some of them were this that you see here, it's the decaf version, uh, which just means it's the deck of cards. There's also another version, same exact cards, but you'd find them inside of a larger pouch. And that pouch, along with the deck of cards, had like 100 grams of actual coffee beans. Nice little touch, uh, maybe a little bit gimmicky. That said, I got the one that was just the deck of cards, otherwise known as the decaf version. So let's take a look at the deck and find out how he did. Now, first off, the tuck case. Uh, it's this glossy finish, no embossing, kind of a plainer tuck case, uh, but it is designed to look like it's stained all over with coffee. So the entire background is this sort of brown, irregular color to it, almost as if it was just soaked through and then dried out a uh, piece of white paper. So you've got kind of it stained with coffee all the way through. Has coffee playing cards on there, done in a darker brown version of that stain. You can see some of the irregular color going all the way through there. Has original espresso blend at the top in this kind of black box. And then down here, a little bit, almost like a label, has 100% Arabica coffee, specifically made for Ido Huang 2019 lecture tour, and then some taste notes. I'm assuming that these taste notes refer to the coffee beans that, that came in this for some of the decks. So you've got soft and balanced, brewed in, on January 29th of 2019, and 100 grams of the beans. So interesting look to the front here. You have little stains, and here's one of the larger stains kind of coming around the tuck here. Uh, but this is meant to look like a coffee ring, uh, but that kind of goes all the way around uh, stain there. And you'll see those kind of stains all throughout the tuck and the deck itself. Uh, this black banner continues onto the other side. Uh, and you have the batch number out of 300. This was actually hand numbered, but it was hand numbered on the cellophane. A little bit annoying, but there was red ink on the cellophane. That said, when I unwrapped it, away went the number. That's a little bit of a disappointment. Wish they'd uh, numbered it on the tuck instead. Uh, you've got over here, approved by Ido Huang Signature, and then roasted, brewed, and painted in Jakarta, Indonesia. This deck was actually made, or a lot of the designs were made by making actual coffee and then using that to paint the designs. And you'll see a little bit of that explained as well, as well on the back. Down here, it's got a little bit of an explanation of how this was made, made with actual Indonesian Arabica coffee beans that were brewed, and then that coffee was used to paint a sheet of canvas that was processed, and this deck was the result. Kind of a cool uh, way of making the deck. And then at the top, a little bit of a cheeky thing, store this deck inside the box when you're not using it, and it will last longer. That's probably true. Bottom has very simple Cardamundi ad copy. And then the top, nothing at all printed. As you open it up, drink coffee, play cards, and then just a little bit of brown on the inner flaps and nothing printed on the inside. That's it. Interesting tuck case. Uh, fairly simple, straightforward uh, design to it, but not bad. Interesting. Now let's look at the cards themselves, and we'll start with the back design. I don't know how I feel about this back design. It has a thin to medium poker border white around the edge, but then the center design is really just this coffee stained look, almost as if coffee was splashed over it and then allowed to dry. Now it's the same all the way through the deck, so the design is exactly the same on all of these. Personally, I think I probably would have liked it a little bit more uh, if they'd done a more random design to it, if that makes sense. Uh, the fact that all of these are the exact same design, I think, pulls away a little bit for me. That said, if you're using it in fans, I guess some of those darker spots will leave you with a little bit of a design. But as you go through there, you can see just the irregularities and the darker portions as you go through that coffee stain. Uh, the brown, obviously it's in the coffee theme. You know, it's, it's kind of a plainer back to me, uh, but a little bit interesting in that it was made with coffee. So there's the back design. And then 
Uh, as far as extra cards, you do get a few of those. You get two Joker cards. I do like these. They are very simple. Just a Joker in the center and then have a coffee ring slightly different on each one of them. So the two Jokers, same design, but made a little bit unique in that the coffee ring was different on each one. Do like those Jokers. Uh, you get a double backer, although the staining is a lot lighter on one side than the other. So different back, but it's a double backer there. And then you have this Queen of Hearts and it's splashed with a darker coffee stain. We'll see when we get to the Queen of Hearts itself. Looks the same, but not so much of this uh, coffee stain throughout. So I'll come back to this one when we get to the Queen of Hearts in the deck. Uh, but you get a duplicate Queen of Hearts there. Now the rest of the deck, it is a full custom deck. It's all done, uh, again, remembering the story, it's done like kind of painted design with coffee. So here's the Ace of Spades, very simple, coffee playing cards, uh, stained looking uh, painted uh, spade pip there in the center, and you can see a faint coffee ring kind of accenting this on the side. Uh, the index and pip itself does not look like it's painted. This actually looks fairly bicycle standard up here. Uh, but it's switched to this kind of brown color to match the theme of the deck. So there's your Ace of Spades. Your number cards, the layout's going to be fairly bicycle standard. Difference is going to be the pips are going to be done in this brown. And on every one of the numbers, one of the pips is going to be this painted style. If that makes sense. So some of them are going to have very sharp edges and are just colored in brown as if it was stained with coffee. But then one of the pips is going to have this much more, much rougher and painted style to it. Now you will notice as you go through, the one unique pip is designed exactly the same. So it's like they painted one spade pip and then put that painted spade pip into one of the positions on each of the cards. Hope that makes sense. Uh, so as I go through here, you'll see the top left one is always the same, whereas the rest of them are more of a recolored regular pip. Some of the cards are gonna feature these rings again on it. So just really irregular feel to the deck everywhere as you go through these rings. And you'll see just little stains added onto some of these. And there's your 10. And then there's your court card. So the court cards are kind of cool. It's basically a bicycle standard deck, but this is the piece that was primarily done with the repainting. So it's painted using coffee. It's pretty well done in my opinion. I like the design. I like how hand drawn it looks, uh, but it's still very recognizable as the classic quartz. So pretty cool. Uh, as you go to the hearts, same color. There's no difference in the color between the red and the black cards. So it's keeping with the theme. Uh, and you'll see more staining as you go through here. So here are the hearts, uh, very similar to what we looked at with the spades. There's another one of those coffee stains. Now here's something I find a little bit off-putting. They use the exact same coffee ring on the card. So you'll see six or seven cards throughout here that have a coffee ring, but it is the exact same ring, just maybe repositioned. Hard to tell as you look through these, but you'll see the same, the same element like right here and here. This is essentially the same coffee ring that's just reused on here. Wish they'd done something to make these a little bit more unique from card to card. There are your hearts. And I mentioned when we got to the Queen of Hearts, we'd look at it in comparison to the double. So there's the double Queen of Hearts. So just the other one splashed with coffee. I suppose you could use that in an effect somehow. And then into the clubs. And there are those. There's another one of those rings. Into the club courts. And last but not least are the diamonds. And went all the way through. And the Diamond Quartz. So it's an interesting deck. What do we think of this? Well, uh, first of all, the handling. Uh, it's the Cardamundi B9 stock. You can see that classic finish on here. Uh, so I love how the Cardamundis handle. Uh, it's a little bit of a thicker feel to it, but they fan beautifully right out of the box. Um, I, I really am a big fan of how the Cardamundis handle. That said, if you've handled other Cardamundi decks, uh, some of the Knights decks, a lot of the decks from Illusionist, uh, for example, come in that Cardamundi B9 stock, you'll be familiar with how these handle. Uh, I personally am a big fan. Uh, the usage of the deck, I struggle with this one. I think, you know, for cardistry you'd probably want to see it with a little bit more of a geometric pattern to it 
uh, and more of a two-way back design maybe would help it as you're flipping these in different directions. You know, the fact that this is a one-way back design and really just a kind of a monochromatic with all brown, I think maybe doesn't lend itself as well to cardistry. Uh, for gameplay, it's going to be limited. The biggest thing that's going to limit these is the fact that the red and the black cards are the same color. It makes it a lot harder to distinguish between the suits. So I think it's going to kind of limit it for that. I suppose if you're going to use this, just a different, unique themed deck that's still fairly usable for magic, I suppose is probably the sweet spot of this one. Not really sure. Uh, it's an interesting deck to have. I just kind of struggle with, I don't know how exactly this design finds its place uh, for actual use. It's not quite artistic enough to be a pure collector deck, uh, and it's not formed in a way that makes it all that great for cardistry, magic, or gameplay. So that's my kind of one knock on the deck. That said, it's an interesting, unique design, and I love how it was made. So that's it. That's this look at the coffee playing cards. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what other decks you want to see. Subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings, and I'll see you for the next one.